Let's get into it, baby. So spoilers, again, if you haven't seen, I won another Road to Wallala Weekly. I won the first one, then I lost the second one, and then I won the third one once again. And these are the results of the tournament. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I need YouTube content. You guys need entertainment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through some of the games. And maybe record a couple of uh, Get Good With Beastie episodes, kind of give you guys my thought process and kind of, you know, just go from there, what went wrong, what went good. And yeah, kind of like uh, analyzing tournament matches. So let's get into it. So the first game that I played against Kazva, he picked HRE, I, uh, we both been Rus, I think. And um, I mean, the game started off fine. I just, I made a mistake in... I played too defensively. Kazma, as you guys know, cannon, uh, cannon rushes. Tower rushes a lot. A lot. Like, he can tower rush with HRE. I've, I've faced tower rushes of his with, a, like, him playing HRE, tower rushing me. Like, he, he, he has his own style, he has his own weird play style, and you kind of have to expect everything. So, my thought process was okay, if I just play it safe and survive the early shenanigans I'll be in a good spot what ended up happening is uh, I wasted a lot of resources on trying to be safe and then disaster struck so I knew that Kazva is gonna try a tower rush or sneak a dock like 100% I knew going into this he's gonna try something so I was very, or I try to be proactive with my scouts and, and try to see what's going on and, you know, where he has stuff and all that. So the early game started off pretty normal. Both HRE, by the way, HRE mirror. Uh, it started off pretty normal. I'm aging up, he's aging up. He's aged up with six workers, so I've aged up with three. So this is where playing defensive is fine, but I played overly defensive, right? So... I wall off here to prevent any docks from here. Technically, I could have put patrol something, but I was like, I want to be extra safe, right? So I made another wall here, which is about 100 wood, 110 wood for this wall. And of course, Kazva being Kazva is like, uh, you know what? I'm going to do like the thing you don't expect. Like, even though you expect me to do like a tower rush or something, right? I'm going to do something you'll never expect. So what he did is he sent a villager, when my scouts were on the other side defending the scouts, he sent the villager all the way around and made a fucking dock here. Now, uh, I saw this with my dock, but basically I have no units and Docks build pretty fast, so by the time I saw this, by the time I reacted, it was too fucking late. So I send the villager now, and it finishes. So it, it like, doesn't matter. Uh, so this is the issue at Four Lakes. This is already good for him. Like, r this is really... I can't emphasize at a high level, this is already insane damage. Because if I have to make a galley, and he makes a galley, he's infinite far ahead because he can kill my fishing ships, right? He can kill three fishing ships, and because it's this map, Four Lakes, which is uh, not a ladder map, it's played in tournaments, I can't counterattack with galley, so it's just fucking useless, right? So I have to kill the dock, and I'm gonna lose fishing ships, so the damage's already done. Not to mention the mining time, so I try to pull more workers, and of course the galley comes out, and I lose three villagers. And then it proceeds to kill my fishing boats, ruin the mining. So these walls were kind of completely wasted. So that was a Monka S. Meanwhile, he's taking up faster because I didn't have the gold because I pulled the villagers. So now I try to wall everything because uh, I saw with the scout that he's edging up. He picks up relics faster. And this is what I mean. It snowballs so fast. Like at a high level, especially in mirror matches, Shit snowballs so fast. Like, you go from you're fine to just you're fucking dead. So he takes, he mows down all the relics. I think I get one total. I drop it here to try to get another. But yeah, he gets four relics. And I knew I was behind. So I was like, okay, the only way to 
win this is if I get a wall and try to go Imperial and get our earlier Swabia, Palace of Swabia, so I can print out workers and kind of uh, come back with that kind of thing. Uh, or at least try to delay the game so I wouldn't die now. Because we, if we fight 9 Feudal, I just die, right? Because he has 4 relics, so he has insane gold income. So what ended up happening is um, he just pushed with uh, mass crossbow, three, yeah, two stables, three crossbows, three archer rangers crossbows, and I literally just died. So uh, yeah, I did get Palace of Sabia, but I had no defense. I bought some stone to get a spring gold emplacement. I just tried repairing this, but it has too many units, and I literally got nothing, so I just died. Uh, but yeah, that, that game, I think it's a good example and a lesson for me, like, uh, I should be aware of what my opponent can do and their style, and I should be like, okay, he loves to do this or that, but I should just be more hyper-focused on my scouting rather than putting up so many walls that didn't do anything, right? That was the that was the issue, and like I said, once the dock went up, it's like. Love your content, um, And another another lesson that I learned, like, Casma has improved a lot recently, and he very much commits to whatever he does. Like he doesn't like if he tower rushes, he doesn't do one tower and transitions. He does like ten towers. If he attacks with knights, he doesn't do two knights and then transitions. He makes like thirty knights, right? If he makes archer range, he doesn't make one, he makes three, right? So he, whatever he does, he's just fully committed to it. And I think the best takeaway from this series versus Kazwa is that I should just fight him in whatever stage we're in. Like, I shouldn't try to cut any corners. I should just, if he's attacking feudal, I should just fucking stay in feudal. You know? I should not try to get to the next stage or be greedy here or there. Like, I should be confident in my play and I should just go along with it, right? So this game we got Mongol Mirror and Dry Arabia. Uh, we both got a pretty good spawn, uh, I would say. Like, I got a gold next to TC. He's got a gold next to TC, so... Um, and Woodline, obviously. So we bo both got a really, really good spawn. My... Uh, stone is a bit farther away, his stone is a bit closer, but it's also forward stone. So, those are the, the differences, right? Um, so yeah, when I saw this, uh, I was like, okay, I can definitely be aggressive. He scouted instantly, which is very common for a Mongol mirror. So, I, what I wanted to do is tower rush the stone, actually, because I noticed, if you look at the map, the stone that he can take, the other ones are like the one at the top, the one in the middle, which are not good either. And you need stone as Mongol. So I wanted to stop the stone mining. Or again, like I said, at least engage into full-on fights. Like if it's Dark Age, fuck it, we'll fight in Dark Age, right? I didn't make four spearmen and stop. I was like, I'm committing, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do what he does and I'll try to do it better, kind of thing, right? So... We end up fighting here, um, you know, he also made Spearman, obviously, so we kind of had similar amount of units, so there was a lot of micring, and I managed to sneak a villager that... How did you not see it? What? That, that scout definitely saw that villager, but I don't know if he actually saw it. So I sneaked the villager around, and uh, I started making a tower here, because again, this is his woodline, the other woodline is here, which is super forward. So right now I'm just buying time and I realize, okay, he does not actually know about uh, about the villager. I kill a Khan, but I lose the scout. So kind of an equal trade, but Khan will respawn. Scout won't, but Khan is better because it's range, right? So it's kind of like a, a trade-off, but his is better in the long run. Mine is better right now. So I try to get another tower here closer to the uh, stone. And I don't know if he... Yeah, I think he stopped making units, because right now I have 10 spears, and he has 7. And this is what I mean. Like, usually I would stop with the spears, but now it's like, fuck it, I'm committing. So here we go about fighting. I have a tower here. And this goes pretty well for me. I think he's forced to move the pasture, right? So with this, I'm very happy with the position that I got. Because now I can... Uh, I still... Yeah, I'm still producing Spearman. So now I'm trying to hold this position, because if I manage to upgrade these two towers, 
in feudal. Like, this is going to be insane for me. I deny the stone and wood line, and I can actually tower here to kill the deny the sheep as well. Potentially tower here for gold, and the game's over. So, I'm aging up with eight villagers, because I wanted to get to it ASAP uh, in order to upgrade these. And I start working the stone. And he pulls 23 villagers. Oh, 20 villagers, sorry. To kill these towers. Um, I don't actually know if, how many villagers I managed to kill. And I'm actually not sure in this situation if I would rather target spearmen or I would rather target villagers. And I remember when I played this game, I was like, what is the right target here? Because on one hand, if you target villagers with your spearmen and the tower, you you kill villagers, right? So you should be ahead in eco. But if you target spearmen, you still have spearmen, and then I can kill the stone. And I wasn't sure. Most matchups, you want to just kill the villagers. But because it's a mirror match and stone denying is important, I felt like maybe I should target spearmen. And I think I do do that. I kind of go both because I wasn't really sure. But at this point, I am targeting uh, spearmen. I only killed one villager so far. And now my spearmen come out of the tower. And I managed to mow down a couple of more spearmen. And you can see now I, I'm clearly like ahead in the, in the spearmen count. I managed to make a tower in the middle. And I managed to burn this and get uh, the whatever thing is called. We do another little fight here. We trade out, and he gets an archery range. He scouts another tower that I try to get up. Um, but yeah, overall... Uh, overall, he is ahead one villager. I don't know how the fuck that happened. Um, I think I pulled two villagers total. I guess that makes sense. I pulled two villagers total, and I killed one villager here. So that should be, uh, that should be it. Yeah, so right now, I actually don't know what happened. But somehow he managed to get faster, uh... I only have nine, that's why. So, I thought I was in a really good position right now. I was like, okay, he's forced to make an archery range and shit. Uh, I should get faster castle. But, I kinda overdid it on the wood, I guess. I had ten on wood because I wanted to get pastures done so I don't have to worry about them. Which I think if I had six on wood, I could have done uh, a faster transition to castle while still having enough food. But I was kind of worried I'm going to run out, uh, which is why I went so heavy on the pastures. And he also had berries nearby, so even if he runs out of food, he can just get a gur and, and get the berries. But, I mean, technically I could as well, but yeah, sheep is better uh, food income. So right now, I was like, okay, I'm in a pretty good position. Um, I should have faster castle. I, I was sure I'm going to have faster castle, but apparently not. So, yeah, you can see my resources. I got too much of gold. I'm getting a wheelbarrow right now. Did he have a wheelbarrow? No, he didn't. I guess that's where I'm also ahead, right? I had a wheelbarrow. Oh, and I sent another villager. I wanted to put a tower here to kind of deny this section of the map. And he spotted the villager, which was very unfortunate for me. But it is what it is, Britter. Um, I try to come in here, do some damage. I run my con into TC because I'm a good player. As you do. And I lose the con. Um, my wheelbarrow is completed. I sent a villager around here because I thought I saw a villager being sneaky snake, but he wasn't. So yeah, this is one of those things where... This is one of those things where... If you look now, I want to show you guys something. This is a very important note. So this is a mirror matchup, right? His castle is faster, right? And... Like I said, in the game, I was like, how? I was like, did I not do enough damage? Like, what? what's wrong? Kind of thing. But now when I look at it, it, it makes way more sense, right? So first of all, um, he made archers, which are kind of... They're not going to do much. He has like seven archers, six archers. They're not going to do much. I have no units right now. I have... Spe Didn't I have spearmen somewhere? Uh, maybe not. I thought I had spearmen. Oh yeah, I did. Three spearmen, right here. So, he has a little bit more units, but if you look at the production, right? I have blacksmith, 
He doesn't have wheelbarrow. I have wheelbarrow. I'm researching already upgrades. I have double stable and spearmen, so I have an extra production building. He has two pastures, and I have five. But not only I have five pastures, but I've been producing sheep longer, right? So technically I got more value out of them, right? Um, another thing is he invested into three towers around his base. I guess because he was worried about towers. So that's more wood that was kind of wasted, uh, quote unquote. And I have more stone because he double produced archers as well. So he kind of uh, sucked up all his stone. So now, even though my age up is later uh, than his is, he, he's not really doing anything with it. Like, if you look at it, you usually rush a uh, castle with Mongo so you can get Lancers or you can get Relics. But he actually had no resources, so he's not doing anything with the with the castle. Like, he's upgrading... Like, what is he doing? He's upgrading Spearmen and making Spearmen two at a time. And soon, I will go and I will scout here and see that he has no stables and he has this setup. So I knew that he's gonna go improve siege engineering. So I knew that uh, you know he's gonna be going for mangonels and just try to overpower with mass units. Um, and yeah, this is where I start my lancers and I start my archer ranges because I knew he's gonna go for push. So I wanted to make sure I have archers or crossbows, whatever I need in order to defend this. And uh, yeah, I go for prayer tent. I love my prayer tents. He went for prayer tent as well, but he didn't make any, I think, or I. Oh, he's making one now, okay. Um, and I can't remember which one I go for first. Oh yeah, he found- he kept finding, by the way, my villagers. Like, this tournament, I gotta say, in, uh, in this series, and in the one against Mista, I kept fucking running villagers into opponent's army. Like, it was insane. So, yeah. So I try to set up uh, towers around the map, you know, just getting map control so my units can move fast, so that I have more vision, it's hard for opponents to engage, get across the map. And the first relic I go for is this one, because it's kind of pretty far away, and I don't have that side of the map covered. That's something a lot of people don't know, or maybe are not aware. Which relic do you go first, right? So if you look at the map, which is the best relic to go for, right? And you have to make a decision based on... What do you think your opponent's gonna do? What do you think you should do? Where the opponent's army is? Where you can drag his army so you don't get denied? So if you look, he made a prayer tent here. So it makes the most sense for him to go for this relic right here. This one in the middle or this one at the top, right? Because it's the prayer tent is in a northern side. So it doesn't make any sense for him to go for my relic on my side or this one because my army is here and there's a tower here. So I would spot it. So I figured if he's going for a relic, he's going to go either for this one or the top one because the middle one is not really accessible because I'm right there. So what I did is I sent my, um, because uh, I saw the prayer tent. So I sent my units around here to try pick off the, uh, the monk that comes out. And I knew by doing this, he's going to move his army backwards and then my monk can, or my shaman can go and pick up the relic super easy, right? And that's something that a lot of people maybe don't consider, but... Uh, this is something that I think about quite quite a lot. So I see the shaman here. Uh, and it's important, I think, to consider. So I'm running around this side, you know, just trying to be like, kind of like, you know, don't run this way or I'm gonna kill you. I do the scouting falcon so I can see shaman if he's trying to move in here. But anyway, I figured out this, this might be a hard relic for me to take. So I go for that one first and Depending which relic you're gonna take, also depends what's your position in the game. Obviously, I can't prevent this right now, but I know his whole army is here, so I can just continue picking up relics for free. I do a little uh, Lancer harassment from the north side because his army isn't there, and I'm just kind of trying to maintain active while I'm producing a lot of archers because his army is literally Spearman Crossbow Archer, which if I just mass archers, I'll just beat it. I pick up the one in the middle, because it's very contested. And even though this one is far away from both of us, it's going to be a lot easier for me to pick up the relic than him, because I have Lancers, which are mobile, and he has Spearmen. And you'll see in a moment why he should not be going for that relic. Um, so yeah, I, I think I mow down four relics in total. Uh, I go down for the bottom one. And the last one, uh, here it is. And the last one I go for is the one closest to me because 
that's mine and he's not gonna take it so there's no reason for me to rush it so like I said with the one in the middle the one at the top and this one being mine I knew that the last one he's gonna be going for is the bottom one so I waited with my con in between like like this side to see the shaman I see it I pop it and uh, I already knew that his army was there by the way because I just saw it with the uh, Lancer so what I do is I just fake my whole army I knew that that's a part of his army, it's not a full army. And this is why, if you're playing against Lancers, you cannot run with infantry that far away from your base. Because you're basically all in with your army and you're just gonna lose everything, right? Like, he can't run away. So, I just hunt him down and there's a small pop of his army. And I get the relic! So, now I'm full relics against one. Um, I scout his stone here, which again, stone in the middle is blocked. And our first stone's expired, so I knew he has to go for this stone, which now is going to be uh, under attack as well. So overall, like this game went pretty, pretty well for me. Uh, he's trying to take my relic here, but that's already gone. So he only took one relic, and I think he made like two or three shamans. So I think your relic is still pretty good, but yeah. Uh, meanwhile, he went for second TC, by the way, which is uh, I expect he's going to do a full-on push. But now when I go in, I see that he has a second PC. Uh, I do a little dive, I kill a couple of villager, villager kills. He has four or five workers ahead right now, which is not a big deal. And I knew if he made this TC, it's not uh, up for a very long time. So I knew that th this is gonna take a while to kick in. So I was like, okay, I should just start fighting. I have the gold uh, lead. I should just capture the sacred size as well. And that's gonna give me insane gold boost and I can you know, start trading and start fighting him. And my plan here wasn't necessarily to go in and kill his workers, because what's the point, right? Uh, my goal was to actually just section off this part of the map. And if I deny this wood line even, the game's over, because he's gonna run out of wood, right? So I slowly started building towers and sacred sites to go for uh, basically two win condition, which is something I love to do. Two win condition is when you're trying to kill your opponent, one win condition. Uh, well, actually, it's like three in a way. Like one win condition is just beating his army and winning. One win condition is sacred sites. So you put on put him on a timer, force him to come out. And then the third win condition is something that I love doing uh, in my games is trying to run your opponents out of resources. So if I, for example, if I just set up towers like this, right, around his map, I don't need to actually attack. He's gonna die by not having resources. So once you get that position, you don't need to do anything. You can just wait there. Plus the sacred size you're taking, so you kind of you have multiple ways to put pressure on your opponent and win at the same time. So I'm just running around with these lancers, trying to do any damage I can. You know, giving him idle time, like giving him this much idle time with one lancer is definitely worth it. Like that's 29 or 30 workers, sorry, because one died by one lancer. Because I have um, armor upgrade, like you can see, he's not taking any damage. And this is, like, very, very worth for me, so, you know, just keep him in busy. Uh, here, this tower, even though it's a arrow slit tower, so it doesn't do a lot of damage, people are very apprehensive about engaging into it, because I'll have the, uh, you can see the circle, I'll have the movement speed boost. So he doesn't want to engage into it, so he's slowly starting to work on it. And if you look everywhere around, I have another tower here, I have a tower here, and these are Springle upgraded towers. Making one there, making one there, so... Like I said, even if he goes through this one, it's like the towers are basically delaying his push in that matchup. Or in any matchup, for that matter. And I saw he's going Mangonel, so I was like, okay, I got Siege Engineering, I'll just get Spring Alts. And uh, we'll just fight. Uh, this one was pretty exposed, because I saw that he's building another one in the back. So I just went to dive. And this is part of the game, 19 minutes, is like one Mangonel is a lot of resources. So it's not like, oh, you know, you just traded a lot. Like, I traded three Lancers, but I thought that it was, like, really, really worth for me. So, yeah. Now I do some kiting. And this is kind of like the feudal attacks with Knight Archer versus Spearman Archer. Uh, except Men at Arms are kind of useless because they don't really do that much damage to Knights. So Knights can just fight him. And right now he pulls the Spears back because I was already firing them with Archers to build a mangonel so then i just focus fire archers onto crossbows and i just let my lancers kill men at arms so now he's forced to run 
His mango finishes. I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. I traded pretty well there. And then I make a couple of spring golds and I uh, just finished the game. I also went for the, the gold in the middle because I have the map control. So there's no reason to take this close gold or this close gold or this gold. I should just go for the risky golds right now because my map, the map control is completely mine. And uh, yeah, he's trying to push here. I got the three spring golds. He goes for the final push, but you can see like I have more army and my army is more uh, tech heavy, right? Because of uh, Lancers, so. Even if he won the fight here, there's still towers like everywhere. So he can't counter push instantly. So I just target fire the mangoes. I'm splitting my archers so he can get a good shot. And that's it. So like I said, what I realized from the first game in this series in general is versus him, I should just play aggressive in the age that he wants to play in. Like if he wants us to go castle, let's go castle. But then I should fight in castle, right? Because against most players that play more, um, I guess standard or macro oriented, uh, you can cut corners if you can judge that the time is right. But against someone that fully commits like him, uh, there's no point to cut corners because you can just die like I did in the first game. <clears throat> this is something I don't see. Why don't people get faster building movement and move their shaman with the tent to take relics faster? Because you don't get gold while the tent is moving. So while that is a cool idea and you will get relics faster, I actually think you lose out the gold in the end uh, because you are not generating gold while your tent is moving. Uh, and also you do want, see, that's the thing. If you want one shaman and do that, that might work out, but I still think it's worse, even though it's cooler, uh, or maybe it's even faster to pick up relics that way, but you're going to need multiple shamans either way, um, because you want to get the sacred sites as well. And having one shaman do three sacred sites and four or five relics is going to take really, really, really long. Um, yeah, I, I would say if you're playing like an FFA uh, where there's like FFA Nomad where there's like 10 relics making like two prayer tents and running them to the middle because the map is so huge does make sense but in one-on-ones I, I don't actually think it's good to ride around prayer tent uh, around for that reason but that's a good question I used to do that but I actually didn't realize you don't generate gold when the tent's moving so I didn't stop doing it after uh, French versus Rus um, I feel like French is slowly becoming one of my worst civs by the way I don't know why I don't know what has changed, but um, I, I still do fine with it. I win with it. I just don't, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable with it is the best way to put it. And I'm not sure why that is, um, but it just doesn't feel natural, I guess. Like I still win, but it doesn't feel natural. So um, I'm actually feeling Roos quite a lot lately. Like I feel really good when I play Roos. And that was a save previously that I wasn't comfortable with for some reason, but now it just seems very, very natural. So, uh, this is Frisian Marches, uh, the map. And it's, uh, again, it's another map we use in tournaments, and it's not on the ladder. Um, this Stealth Force looks like a thumbs up, doesn't it? A little... You guys see that? The minimap? Uh, but anyway, uh, for those that don't know, this map has a shitload of food. It has two deer packs, two boars. It has a lot of sheep. A lot of sheep. And then it has these shoreline fishes that are 500 food each. And there's a lot of those as well. So it's just a map that has a shit ton of food. To the point where I actually haven't played a game where, you, where I needed to transition to farms. Just because there's so much food uh, on it. Like the, the game ends before you need to make farms. Unless you lose map control I guess. So this map is all about contesting the food sources. Because whoever is controlling the food, like if you manage to stop your opponent from getting food, they need to go farms and they will automatically lose. If you guys didn't know, getting shoreline fish with workers is actually better than getting boar. Think about that. And you don't got to kill the boar. You don't got to do anything. You just got to put uh, a mill for it. So... Uh, just to guys give you, I guess I didn't do an introduction for Four Lakes. I'll talk about it maybe uh, later in the next series. 
But the reason why French is so good on this map, there's multiple sieves that are actually good on this map. Uh, both maps, the Four Lakes and the Frisian Marches. Uh, French is good because their drop-off buildings cost less. So mill costs 25 wood. And you're going to need a lot of those, right? You're going to need one for the berries, two. You're going to need one here. You're going to need one here, one for a deer, one here, one here, one here. TLDR, you save a lot of wood uh, by playing French. And also... Uh, your aggressor is French, so you can usually win out in Feudal, or at least have a good chance to win out in Feudal. So French is just a good sieve on this map, because you can uh, pressure your opponent and, and like get your food sources, but deny theirs, right? On the other hand, Rus is also really good, uh, because uh, there's a lot of animals on this map, so you can actually get to 500 bounty very often. Even though they, they reduced them recently, I think, it's still really good. Uh, you can put like hunting cabin here and not only you get gold income from both of these right with hunting cabins You can also get food sources uh, a lot of people are building TC's like if you build a TC here you get you can get food and you get a defensive structure So there's a lot of benefits to it uh, HRE is played on this map a lot Any like booming is possible on this map and just super aggressive play. So that's very interesting So um, I played this exact matchup last week against Kazva, and I lost. And, uh, he used a strategy that, uh, it's one of those where if you don't know it, you lose, and then next time you're like, I ain't losing against this shit again. And that's what I said, I ain't losing against this shit again. And how did I know this is the same strat? Well... Rus makes three scouts, okay? Maybe sometimes four. But if you see continuous scout production, that's exactly what he did last week. He delayed his feudal and he kept producing scouts from hunting cabin. Oh my God, look at that, sh look at that sheep gun, holy fuck. See, look at that, it's insane. So, uh, and if you look at my sheep count, not great. I mean, I have some here actually, so that's pretty, it's the, he had a, I think he got a little bit more, but Overall, it's good for me. So, last week, what he did when he beat me in the road to Wolalo 2, he ma made scouts continuously, denied my gold mining, and then he tower rushed me with Rus. So he made a tower, and it was actually the same situation, by the way. Same situation. Both of my golds, not only they were forward, but they were in front of each other. So last week, he made a tower like th here, Denied both of my golds, and if you look at the map, there's no fucking gold on this map. Like, you have to go really far on the map. So, what ended up happening is, like I said, he made scouts. I wasn't really sure what to do. I never played against it. Then he towered me, which I didn't see, because I didn't have any scouts next to the gold. And from then on, I just kind of slowly died. So this week, I was aware that he might do that, right? Because he did it already. And then I saw the fourth scout. And I was like, I think this is the same thing. And then I saw the fifth scout and a sixth scout. And I was like, yep, this is definitely a thing. Uh, I got some fire from TC. And the moment that I saw that he's doing the same thing, I added another scout. So I went up to three scouts uh, total, which is very uncommon for French. Obviously, you only go two or for any other suit except Bruce, I guess. So here, I'm trying to still collect gold. Like, I don't want to give up the gold because I want the knights. And I can, you know, you can see a fuck ton of scouts. So I move uh, away a bit. And what I decided to do, I was like, okay, if I make a barracks, it doesn't make sense. Uh, or, or it makes sense, but it won't help me because he's still going to have scouts. He's going to be annoying. And if he put pulls eight villagers, he can still make uh, a tower here, right? So what I decided to do is just pull a lot of villagers and just make a tower here of my own, which will prevent his tower rushing and deny the scouts at the same time. So I felt that's the best thing to do, and that's what I did. So here I go for the tower. He tries to harass, but I also have three scouts. So I start target firing his scouts with my scouts. Uh, and if he fights my scouts, the tower goes up. If he doesn't fight my scouts, if he fights the villagers, I start killing his scouts. So either way... I win, and I just try to pull the low HP villagers away, like this one. I try to run these away, and I kill one scout, and I think I actually get another scout here. 
Because I think he's also not sure what to do. He had seven scouts total, which is a lot of food. Each scout is how much? 70 food? Yeah, 70 food. So he basically delayed his feudal by quite a bit, which you will see in the age up. I get the tower up. I get my gold. Very nice. And now I can also see if there's a tower coming. Kazve is better than you. Uh, thank you. I appreciate your uh, intelligent comment. Um, so here I'm in a pretty good position. I got all my food. And for me, this is like... Like, what did this accomplish? It delayed my night a little bit. Um, because I can't produce it yet because I had to pull the villagers and all. But I knew that because he produced so many scouts that his feudal is very much delayed, right? Uh, so I knew that I'm in a very good position and I'm ahead. Obviously my wheelbarrow is delayed, but I was like, that's fine. Like it's it's one of those things that uh, it is what it is because you usually want to get feudal uh, or wheelbarrow as you're going to feudal age. So he's still in a dark age, by the way, it's five minutes. And uh, he's still not there yet. So I try to scout around. Because, like I said, Kazva is a sneaky snake, so I'm like, okay, what is it gonna happen now? Is it gonna be a tower rush? Is it gonna be a feudal outlet? Is it gonna be a castle rush? What is it? See? And, uh, what came out of it is a thing that I didn't expect, which is why you wanna scout. What do you guys think happened here? Let's ask the Twitch chat. What do you guys think? What do you think he did here? Okay, there, okay, there, I, I see the flaw in my question because he already has stone, but he went for second TC, which again, I did not expect. I, I thought he would castle rush or he would all in, which is why it's very important to scout against Kazma. He went second TC off of this. And I was very, I was relieved. I was like, thank fuck, we're gonna have a normal game. Or, well, normal game, you know, it's, it's fucking weird game already, but... Uh, I, I was very happy to see this like if I play against a very aggressive player that does a lot of crazy Decisions, I would rather have him slow down and then I can dictate the game than have me fucking guessing what he's gonna do next, right? So right now you can see like I'm scouting dude. I even sent uh, this scout I sent it multiple times everywhere. So he didn't like sneak in 20 villagers as he's getting food somewhere um so yeah, I'm just chilling because the only thing that I see now is villagers under TC. I see barracks and nothing else. So you can see like I'm literally scouting everywhere. I'm scouting in the forest. I'm trying to keep track of his units. I just want to know what's going on, right? And he had so many scouts I couldn't kill them all. Like I felt like I kept killing the scouts, but there's like always three, four more. So right now, I see the TC and I'm like, yes, great, perfect. And I thought that this TC, I mean, it's 8 minute TC, it's very delayed because what he did in the early game, see, this is the thing, right? A lot of people, when I stream and I say that was all in, people are like, it wasn't all in, He's he didn't lose any villagers. But his scout play is very all in at a high level play because... This second TC should be like at 5, 5.30, right? But because he made so many scouts, he delayed his second TC so much. It, at a high level, it is an all-in. Because if that doesn't work, you're very far behind. So, all-in at a high level isn't necessarily, if this doesn't work, I have nothing left. It's like, if this doesn't work, I am severely far behind. So, when I saw that, I was like, okay, I should be able to just add two archer ranges and just go, go. So, I didn't see this transition, by the way. I, I didn't have, uh, I think, active scouting now, but um, I knew that, like, okay, I just start pushing this. Like, my options are very limited. Like, I can go my own TC, which is going to be delayed compared to his, but I think it would have been fine because I'm ahead in villagers anyway, because French. Um... So I mined some stone uh, for a tower. I don't know why I stopped it here, actually. I think I was gonna, oh yeah, I was gonna tower this area, but then he made a TC so I couldn't tower. 
So then I stopped mining it. And then I resumed mining because then I decided to make towers here. Um, but yeah, I was like, okay, I can either go castle and kind of risk being behind workers. And if I did that, I would have actually fucking died. Because Casva went for triple stable horsemen. Which, think about it. If I stayed back with like three knights in one castle, I would have actually died. So, I decided to go aggressive. Remember what I said earlier? Just take a stage or age that he's in and just play in it. Don't cut any corners. So I was like, I'm gonna just fight him. Fuck this. So I went double archery. I went, I had this stables obviously. And I think a little bit later I had another stables. And uh, I just went for it. So here... I'm trying to harass, and this is why this map is good for Rus and is good for uh, French as well. Like this income right now that you have is insane when you have the uh, the water. I'm, I'm sending some of my workers as well. And I decided to kind of um, split his second TC from his main TC. I guess this is one benefit for the aggressor because the second TC is, is so far away. If you actually kind of cut it off from reinforcements, you get a lot more free space to, to play with. So here he engages, and this kind of looks bad for me, but it's not really. Like, if you like, you might think that Red Army is bigger or is stronger, but I, I was like, this ain't gonna work, Chief. Because one thing to take in consideration: four units out of this army are scouts. Like, I I almost I have almost as many knights as he has horsemen. So, and also he has only six spears. I have eight archers, so I was like, okay, if I just focus on the spears, my knights clean up everything else. So here he goes for the engagement. I decide to fight here, and I send my scouts to hold up the spearmen a little bit. I pick off one spear, two spears, and you can see his spears are just fucking stuck. Like, this was a really, really good position for me. The knights are uh, engaged into uh, horsemen. I started with six knights in this fight, and I ended with five. So I could have micro that one knight better, but it is what it is. My tower finishes. I start building rams, and my knights start healing. So I was like, you know what? Let me just send another villager. I'm gonna make another tower like here, further, kind of give myself a, a backup point, but also continue to split up his uh, bases. So here. Even if I wasn't killing any villagers, I'm still delaying the food income, which is still really good. If I delay the food income, he has no you know, food. Uh, although he still had under his TC, but eventually it's gonna run out, right? So every time he went outside to kill my ram, I managed to get a couple of horsemen, a couple of villagers, got another tower, upgraded it, right? So that he can't burn it down with his units. A couple of spearmen there. And this is the power of French, except now I also have these towers to fall back to. I keep attacking into this, another ram, and I just kind of kept pushing, kept pressuring, and uh, you know, a worker here, a worker there. Even though he's been on second TC for six minutes, we have same workers actually, or I have one more, I think. He manages to burn this one down. But like I said, you know, I still had this one, so it's, you know, I'm upgrading this tower as well, fortifying, which makes it very tanky against melee units. And again, we have a fight, and all I want to do is target fire the uh, spears with archers, and then engage with lancers into uh, horsemen. So again, this might look bad for me, but he's also fighting under a tower. I was target firing with towers onto spearmen as well, and if you look, Spearmen are attacking the archers and knights are fighting the horsemen, so very nice. Again, the fight goes really well for me, and I also managed to micro a lot of the weak knights away so they can heal. And at this point I knew it was it was over because I just killed his whole army and not only I won the battle, like I have so many units left over, so it worked out great. Boom boom boom. TC goes down, villagers go down, and GG gets called. We have done it. So, a good lesson for me, I think, playing against 
someone that prefers to stay in a certain age or, or super commit, just commit with him and, and just play there. And uh, that's it. Like, don't cut corners when I don't, like, need to. And, and it's too risky to do so. So, yeah, I lost against him last week. And I learned from it. And uh, I adjusted. Obviously not in the first game. In the first game, I played too defensive, you know? And I made the mistake of trying to get to Imperial, which... Yeah. So I think going forward, I should just do that. Yeah. Like, I think Kazva's style is very good against me. Because I didn't change my play style. But now that I've adjusted, I think I should do better. But um, who knows, right? If you're watching the part one on YouTube, thank you for watching. This is going to be a, like, kind of like a three-parter. Not really part one, two, three. But I'll just make three videos now. Uh, Twitch gamers, let's keep going.